Okay, so we're um, DS7, I'm Danielle, and this is Manager. So to just kind of declare our uh, roles, we're going to start with here. Architecture is a continuous archive. It's a repository for wealth, events, materials, people, and their related histories and stories. Um, we might see it as a portal through which we speculate on the past and reimagine the future, whether we should or not. And this year, DS7 will be challenging this notion of the archive and what this might suggest in terms of methodologies for how we collect and transform and remember the city in the present. So to just briefly say what our kind of overarching interests are in the studio, this is our third year now. And whereas many architectural projects are situated either in a historical past or a dystopian or a utopian future, we're very much interested in the present or what the modernist writer Gertrude Stein calls the continuous present. And the continuous present describes the present moment as this kind of constant aggregating territory of change rejecting the idea that innovation, new ideas come along and you know replace and supplant what's been before, acknowledging that the past material in terms of ideas, um, things, li lingers and you know this is the territory that we need to, to, to occupy and acknowledge. So over the past two years we've explored a number of questions relating to the notion of the present and how our understanding of what the present is um, shapes our architectural thinking. So in addition to the continuous present, um, over the last few years we've been exploring the expanding field of experimental preservation. And this is a slide that Ron Koolhaas showed in a 2004 lecture at Columbia University, where he um, stated, we are living in an incredibly exciting and slightly absurd moment, namely that preservation is overtaking us. And this simple bar graph shows how the distance between the present and what we, pres what we consider architecturally important to preserve is constantly decreasing, so that we might eventually be in a position where we're actually preserving as a proactive rather than reactive um, exercise. Um, so in the past two years, um, we've been working within the territory of the continuous present and um, challenging the role of the architect in the contemporary built landscape. So in the first year that we taught here, we did this through questioning the museum as a typology that traditionally collects the past and challenging it to collect the present. And we did this in the overbuilt city of New York. And then last year, we went to the kind of very um, protected and restricted um, landscape of Dungeness and Kent. And we were looking at the invisible forces at play there that were haunting the landscape and questioning how we could intervene within this very controlled environment and a constantly shifting terrain. And this year, we shift our focus to the archive as another typology that traditionally focuses on the past. And we start to question ways in which we can intervene or um, record, collect, uh, store, and retrieve parts of the present. So this is what we traditionally think of um, when we think of the archive. This is a project by the artist Thomas Demand, who traditionally makes paper models and photographs them. And um, this is actually a recreation of the Nazi propagandist Lenny Reifenstahl's personal archive. Um, and it's the kind of blankness of all the boxes and the genericness of it and that weird lighting that the artist wants us to think about the, um, I guess, the untrustworthiness of the image um, and how we often think that, er that images can be a substitute for history. And that's something we're quite interested in exploring this year through the archives, that the archive can often not be trusted as a good material witness for what's happened. Um, so the archive also synthesizes the digital and the physical. This is the Canadian Centre of Architecture in Montreal that has a vast archive of um, architects as well as spatial artists. And um, the quote here by the artist Gordon Matter Clark, who's categorized as SP001 in their archive, um, gives a sense of our, like the sense of discovery as you can peruse their physical archive but also the digital archive that's available online. Um, this project by Susan Hiller is called From the um, Freud, from yeah. the Freud Museum. From the Freud Museum. And um, the, I guess the, the collection of ephemera within archival boxes suggests that it's part of the Freud collection but actually um, the title is misleading and it's just a, a collection of objects that she was interested in from her history as an anthropologist and it was inspired by the Freud's collection. So um, I think what's interesting here is the opportunity to intervene within an existing archive. 
This is London, London Metropolitan Archives, and it's an archive we'll be visiting a lot this year. Um, it has like a great collection of maps, images, documents, films, all about London, and we'll be using this as a way to um, begin our site research. And this is a, a slide to kind of talk about how we access material once it's stored within the archive. So um, using labeling, for example, um, we can understand what are the contents inside these kind of faceless, homogenous white bags with a short text description and an image to accompany it. So this title is taken from a research project at the University of the Arts, Karlsruhe. Um, and this asks what processes might be involved in making the archive active, moving from this kind of dormant but trusted witness, to ask if we move from the idea of storage and accumulation um, to its activation, then what kind of what kind of action and what kind of activity is required there? So the first example we wanted to look at was um, this website, um, which is basically an oral history archive of the architect Cedric Price. And um, it was put together a few years ago after his death, so it's a collection of interviews with figures that knew him in his lifetime. Um, so whether that's Hans Ulrich Oberst, who's the curator of the Serpentine Gallery, who over here, very on brief, is talking about the present. Um, or, um, with, and then how these interviews are then tagged, so each of those dots on the screen corresponds to a portal to understand a topic or a project in more detail. So here over in Kohlhaas, you can scroll down and read about him, link to his practice, or find out where they are geographically. And then as you kind of scroll along, you can see the different um, other topics that he would talk about, including projects by Cedric Price, such as the Fun Palace, um, and what we found really interesting about this as the kind of unconventional form of archive is the way you can actually navigate your own bespoke path through the material. So you can choose to go by person or by subject. So if I wanted to hear only segments about the topic of delight, I could listen to Hans Ulrich Oberst talk about it, but once he gets to the end of that green section, it'll automatically trigger a move to another speaker talking about the same subject. So if Danielle and I visited this archive independently, we could each have a totally different experience of the material within it. So now to mention a few projects that we find really interesting and that we see as coming from an architectural position to do this kind of job of reactivating um, the archive. This is a project by forensic architecture who work in the realm of um, kind of um, conflict and um, human, human rights um, justice. And they use the skills of an architect to kind of work with the evidence or scan evidence, uh, contested evidence that, that, is, um, that exists in these cases to try and uh, narr narrate a, a fuller story for, for purposes of, um, kind of inter um, international um, law forums. And so how, we, how might we consider architecture itself as an archive? Um, this refers to Raven Row, a project by 6A Architects, where they took two 18th century houses to convert to um, a gallery. But what's really interesting here is how they kind of acknowledged the past of the building. For example, there'd been a devastating fire, which you see here existed um, as a photographic record in the archives and then was reinterpreted and materially manifest in the treatment of the, the timber here within the galleries. This is the German pavilion from, I think, the 2014 Venice Biennale. And here, the architecture of the German um, chancellor's bungalow was intersected with that of the pavilion. And here, two kind of unresolvable um, narratives of German statehood come together and, and each, each resist one, one singular meaning or reading. And here, um, this is a project by Jorge Otero Palos, who we mentioned um, a moment ago in terms of experimental preservation. This project, The Ethics of Dust, he uses the preservationist tools, which would usually be to clean a building, in fact, to collect the dirt and the pollution. Um, coming from a position that perhaps pollution is one of our most important cultural artifacts and a, a real index of our, our contemporary present. And here we are in the V&A with a bag of this dirt he collected and it really kind of challenges the boundaries that, that um, a museum or an archive would usually police 
by bringing in dirt, things that they usually eradicate, which um, kind of um, suggests that um, that flexible territory we're interested in, in looking at. And here, a project um, by the choreographer Siobhan Davis. This was actually at the ICA, and it um, addressed the question of what is an archive of dance, and how do you re reinterpret and reenact an archive of dance? And we show this here, um, suggesting that perhaps the archive itself was manifest in the in the dancers' bodies itself, themselves, in the conversa conversations they had, and to suggest that in the kind of projects that, that develop within the studio, um, material or oh, re, you know remains remnants may be less tangible than than we'd initially expect. And here to mention the work of the artist Wally Brad, who works as the Atlas Group. And the Atlas Group, um, some of you may have come across, um, it's a fascinating project. It creates an ongoing archive of the Lebanese civil wars by creating fictional witness accounts of um, various incidents. Here, with um, sometimes with quite sober documents within an archive, and then a testimony just to show that um, kind of irreconcilable distance between a lived moment of trauma or just a lived moment of the present, present, and then what would what would be taken as a, a document in the final moment. <coughs> and so, one question that's quite important to us to um, pursue over the year, and um, one that obviously comes up is, well, what's the difference between an archive um, and a museum? And unlike the museum, the archive can be characterised as a space of storage, where time is collapsed, and of ret retrieval, where